Today we are going to look at the Panavia Tornado. There are presently five developers for FSX P3D and one for X-Plane 11. Iris has two good freeware models, a GR4 and an F3. Batavia has a low-priced F3 that is basic but good. Just Flight has a more complex GR1 that looks very good. X-Plane has a highly detailed GR4 that looks stunning. AFS Design has an offering, as does Sim Skunk Works, but I do not own these products. The Panavia Tornado is a multi-role, twin-engined aircraft designed to excel at low-level penetration of enemy defences. The mission envisaged during the Cold War was the delivery of conventional and nuclear ordnance on the invading forces of the Warsaw Pact countries of Eastern Europe. This dictated several significant features of the design. Variable wing geometry, allowing for minimal drag during the critical low-level dash towards a well-prepared enemy, had been desired from the project start. Advanced navigation and flight computers, including the then innovative fly-by-wire system greatly reduced the workload of the pilot during low-level flight and eased control of the aircraft. As a multi-role aircraft, the Tornado is capable of undertaking more mission profiles than the anticipated strike mission. Various operators replaced multiple aircraft types with the Tornado as a common type. The use of dedicated single role aircraft for specialist purposes such as battlefield reconnaissance or maritime patrol duties or dedicated electronic countermeasures were phased out, either by standard tornadoes or modified variants such as the Tornado ECR. The most extensive modification from the base tornado design was the Tornado ADV, which was stretched and armed with long-range anti-aircraft missiles to serve in the interceptor role. The Tornado operators have chosen to undertake various life extension and upgrade programs to keep their Tornado fleets as viable frontline aircraft for the foreseeable future. The RAF and Royal Saudi Air Force have upgraded their tornadoes to the GR4 standard to increase combat effectiveness, while German tornadoes have been undergoing periodic upgrades under the multi-stage avionic system software Tornado in ADA program. With these upgrades, as of 2011, it is projected that the Tornado shall be in service until 2025. That is more than 50 years after the first prototype took flight. The Tornado is cleared to carry the majority of air launch weapons in the NATO inventory, including various unguided and laser guided bombs, anti-ship and anti-radiation missiles, as well as specialized weapons such as anti-personnel mines and anti-runway munitions. To improve survivability in combat, the Tornado is equipped with onboard countermeasures ranging from flare and chaff dispensers to electronic countermeasure pods that can be mounted under the wings. Underwing fuel tanks and a buddy store aerial refueling system that allows one tornado to refuel another are available to extend the aircraft's range. In the decades since the tornado's introduction, all of the tornado operators have undertaken various upgrade and modification programs to allow recently introduced weapons to be used by their squadrons. Among the new armaments that the Tornado has been adapted to deploy are the enhanced paveway, 
and joint direct attack munition bombs and modern cruise missiles such as the Taurus and Storm Shadow missiles. These upgrades have increased the tornado's capabilities and combat accuracy. Precision weapons such as cruise missiles have replaced older munitions such as cluster bombs. Strike variants have a limited air-to-air -air capability with A9 Sidewinder or AIM-132 ASRAM air-to-air -air missiles. Additionally, the Tornado ADV, air defense variant, is outfitted with beyond visual range AAMs such as the Skyflash and the AIM-120 AMRAM missiles. The Tornado is armed with two 27mm Mauser revolver cannon internally mounted underneath the fuselage. The Tornado ADV was only armed with one cannon. When the RAF GR1 aircraft were converted to GR4, the forward-looking infrared sensor replaced the left-hand cannon, leaving only one. The GR1A reconnaissance variant gave up both its guns to make space for the sideways-looking infrared sensors. The Mauser BK-27 was developed specifically for the Tornado, but has since been used on several other European fighters, such as the Alpha Jet, the Gripen, and the Eurofighter Typhoon. The Tornado is capable of delivering air-launched nuclear weapons. In 1979, Britain considered replacing its Polaris submarines with either the Trident submarine or alternatively the Tornado as the main bearer of its nuclear deterrent. Although the UK, UK proceeded with Trident, several Tornado squadrons based in Germany were assigned to secure to deter a major Soviet offensive with both conventional and nuclear weapons, namely the WE-177 nuclear bomb, which was retired in 1998. German and Italian tornadoes are capable of delivering US B-61 nuclear bombs, which are made available through NATO. Nicknamed the Tonka by the British, the tornado made its combat debut as part of the British contribution to the Gulf War in 1991. Operation Granby saw nearly 60 RAF GR1s deploy to air bases at Maharak in Bahrain and Tabuk in Dharan in Saudi Arabia. Several Tornado ADVs were deployed to provide air cover, the threat of their long-range missiles being a significant deterrent to Iraqi pilots who would deliberately avoid combat when approached. Early on in the conflict, the GR1s targeted military airfields across Iraq, deploying a mixture of uh, thousand pound unguided bombs in loft bombing attacks and a specialized JP233 runway denial weapon. Six RAF tornadoes were lost in the conflict, four were lost while delivering unguided bombs, one was lost after delivering JP-233 and one trying to deliver laser guided bombs. On 17 January 1991, the first tornado to be lost was shot down by an Iraqi SA-16 missile following a failed low-level bombing run. On 19 January, another RAF tornado was shot down during an intensive raid 
and Talil Air Base. The impact of the tornado strikes upon Iraqi airfields is difficult to determine. In an emergency deployment, the UK sent out a detachment of Blackburn Buccaneer aircraft equipped with the Pave Spike laser designator, allowing Tornado GR1s to drop precision guided weapons. A further crash program in support of the sudden military action saw multiple GR1s outfitted with the TL laser designation system, which enabled the GR1 to achieve probably the most accurate bombing in the RAF's history. Although laser designation proved effective in the Gulf War, only 23 TL pods were purchased by year 2000. Shortages hindered combat operations over Kosovo. Following the initial phase of the war, the GR1 switched to medium level strike missions. Typical targets for these strikes included munition depots and oil refining facilities. Only the reconnaissance tornado GR1As continued to operate at the low altitude, high speed profile throughout the war. The GR1A emerged unscathed despite the inherent danger posed by missions such as conducting pre-attack reconnaissance. In the war's aftermath, Britain maintained a military presence in the Gulf. Around half a dozen GR1s were based at Al Al Salam Air Base in Kuwait for operations over the southern no-fly zones as part of Operation Southern Watch. Another half a dozen GR1s participated in missions over northern Iraq in Operation Provide Comfort. In March 1993, a midlife upgrade project of the tornado was launched to upgrade the GR1 and GR1As to GR4, GR4A standard. The Tornado GR4 made its operational debut in Operation Southern Watch, patrolling Iraq's southern airspace from bases in Kuwait. The GR4 was heavily used in Operation Telic, the British contribution to the 2003 invasion of Iraq. RAF tornadoes flew in the opening phase of the war, flying alongside American strike aircraft to rapidly attack key installations. Following an emphasis on minimizing casualties, tornadoes of 617 Squadron deployed the new Storm Shadow precision cruise missiles for the first time in the Iraq conflict, while 25% of the UK's air launch weapons in Kosovo were precision guided. Four years later in Iraq this ratio increased to 85 percent. Prior to the 2010 Strategic Defence and Security Review, the retirement of the entire tornado fleet was under consideration and savings of 7.5 billion pounds were anticipated. The review announced that the tornado would be retained at the expense of the Harrier, although tornado numbers are to decline in transition to the Eurofighter Typhoon and later on to the F-35 Lightning. The tornadoes of 15 Squadron at RAF Lossiemouth flew their last sortie on 17 March 2017, before the squadron formally disbanded on 31st of March 2017.
thus ending a 24-year association with the tornado. 1,000 feet remaining. On the 14th of February 2018, number 12 squadron disbanded after 25 years of tornado operations, leaving 9 squadron and 31 squadron as the last two units to fly the Tonka. On the 14th of April 2018, four tornado fighters launched from RAF Akwateri in Cyprus struck a Syrian military facility with storm shadow cruise missiles in response of a suspected chemical attack on Douma by the Syrian regime. On the 10th of July, 2018, nine tornado GR4s from RAF Marham participated in a flypast over London to celebrate 100 years of the Royal Air Force. With the forthcoming retirement of the tornado, the RAF commemorated the type's almost four decade long service with three special paint schemes. The Tornado GR4s flew their last operational sorties as part of Operation Shader on the 31st of January 2019, being replaced by typhoons at Arias Akhtiri the day prior. The eight tornadoes that were stationed at RAF Akhtiri returned to RAF Marum on the 4th and 5th of February 2019, leaving six typhoons behind to take over the operational duties. So I hope you enjoyed all that and see you next time.